And where you're going to start is this little handshake icon for opportunities. And so when you click on that, this is gonna take you to this main dashboard. And you'll see that it's broken out by listings, buyers, and leases. You'll also see um, some more analytics in regards to um, the opportunities that you have already entered into the system. Um, it's really nice. It'll tell you anything that you have closing this month. And again, that's all based on the details that you've inputted for that opportunity. Um, but the nice thing about this is this section here that you can think of this as your sales pipeline. And so the idea is that you first add a new client um, um, into your contacts in your database. So that's really the first step. And then after that, the idea is maybe they mentioned to you that they're looking to list their home or buy a home in the next three months, six months, a year, two years. But that's just the indication for you to say, okay, this is a potential client. I'm going to create an opportunity and I'm going to put them in this cultivate stage. And you, you'll see that it's listed out by cultivate, appointment, active, under contract, and closed. So basically, this is where you can manage that transaction from lead to closed. Um, and so anytime you're creating an opportunity, you're going to create that opportunity, and it's going to ask you to put it in either cultivate, appointment, or active. And let's say you add an opportunity and you put them in Cultivate. The goal is to then get them to a listing appointment or get them to a buyer consultation. And then eventually get a signed buyer agency agreement, meaning they're an active buyer, or a signed listing contract, meaning that it's an active listing, an active seller that you're working with. And then of course, under contract and closed. So to start out, I'm gonna hit this Create Opportunity button in the upper right-hand corner. And I'm also, I my account is set up with a team account. I'm just going to use my personal account. You guys won't see that team account there. You'll just see your name, all opportunities, and all discussions. Um, so again, click on create opportunity. And then it's going to ask you some just kind of basic details about that opportunity. Um, Market center, you won't have to worry about that. Um, don't worry about team. Again, my account is set up for a team account. Um, opportunity type, that's where you're going to select whether it's a listing or a buyer. Um, you know, maybe a, a handful of agents might work with tenants or landlords, but in most cases, listing or buyer. Um, so I'm going to choose buyer and I'm going to be the owner because it's my command account. Client. So this is if you have that client already added as a contact. Um, if you just start typing in that contact's name, you'll be able to select them there. Um, if you have not added them as a contact, um, you would be able to um, add them directly on this screen here. So you could add new contact, and then that will prompt you just to add their phone number and their email address. You can also add a co-buyer. Um, so if they're you're working with um, spouses, um, you can add that co-buyer or co-seller in there as well. You'll notice that the opportunity name defaults to the client's name dash buyer. Um, it would say dash listing if it were a listing opportunity. Um, but the the goal with that opportunity name is once you do have an accepted offer that you're adding in the, uh, the property address as well. And so if it is a listing opportunity, um, we recommend adding in that property address right away. So maybe something like, like that. Um, but it's really up to you um, on how you want to name that opportunity. Um, but as long as you have that property address in there um, prior to submitting documents for compliance review, um, it just helps our compliance broker be, be able to find that opportunity and review it faster. All right, um, custom tags. So very similar to how you can add custom tags to your contacts, you can do the same thing for your opportunities. Um, and so some people may want to put in like first time home buyer, or this is a um, like a um, oh I have it in here. 
uh, like an investor client. Um, and maybe at the end of the year, you want to track, okay, how many transactions did I do with this investor? Um, and it's just a way for you to kind of organize your transactions a little bit better um, because then you can always filter by those specific tags. But it's not required. It's just there for you to utilize if you choose to. Um, estimated close date, time frame, and budget. Those are not required fields. Um, sometimes when you're first creating an opportunity, you're not going to know those right away. Um, so definitely not required. Um, but if you are working with a buyer and you know their budget, you can certainly enter that in there. Um, commission rate for a buyer would be 2.4. And then the opportunity phase and stage. So this is where it's asking you, okay, where is this client at within that transaction? Um, are they just sort of thinking about buying? Do you have a buyer consultation scheduled or did you already have one? Or is it active? Do you have signed buyer agency or are you actively going out on showings right now? You'll notice that you cannot create an opportunity and put them into under contract or closed right away. Um, you know, there are cases where you may forget to do this part um, or you're working with someone and just things happen really fast. Maybe you meet somebody at an open house, you write on that that home right away that day, you get the accepted offer. Um, if that's the case, not a big deal at all. Still create the opportunity, put them into active, and then you can move them into under contract right after that. Um, but for this case, I'm just going to put this at cultivate. And opportunity stage, um, you'll notice in your account that your um, stages might look a little different than mine. Um, I think the default stages for that cultivate phase is um, watch, nurture, and hot. Um, there is a function in command where you can actually edit these stages. Um, and we've done specific trainings on how to edit that pipeline, that sales pipeline with those stages. Um, so we've got past trainings on that specific piece of it. If you wanna check that out and learn how to edit those stages. Um, but I like to kind of add in the time frame more so um, for that cultivate phase. So maybe I'm adding somebody into Cultivate and they're, you know, only three months out from buying. So they're pretty close. Um, and then once you're done with that, you're just going to hit create. So now it jumps me into the detail section of the opportunity. And so this is everything that I've entered so far. So I'll see it kind of breaks it out into several different um, kind of pieces of information and sections here. So I've got key information. I've got the opportunity type, the name, um, the contacts information, the phase and the stage, where are we at with this um, opportunity, key dates, you know, the date that I created it. But I can go in here and I can always click on this edit, edit pencil icon. And that's where I can edit all of this information here. So this is also where I can edit that opportunity name. So let's say I'm working with this buyer and, you know, we go through the process. I get the signed buyer agency. We go out, go out on showings. We get the accepted offer. This is where I want to add in that property address. And it could just be as simple as that. Um, again, doesn't matter how you name it. Just add in that property address somehow. Um, and you can also scroll down here. You'll be able to add in any of those dates. Um, it is important once you get that accepted offer to add in the estimated close date. Um, so you'll want to go in here, select that little um, calendar icon and select that closing date. So maybe we've got a closing date of December 1st. So there we go. You'll notice that there's an estimated close date and then there's an actual close date. Um, once you do move this opportunity into the closed phase, the system is going to prompt you to confirm that close date. Um, and that's where that gets entered. Um, so prior to closing, we just want that estimated closing date. 
but you can add additional dates in here. Um, you know, it's good just for your knowledge of kind of having everything in one spot. Um, you can think of the opportunity section as your file, electronic filing cabinet. So all of your signed completed documents are going to get entered and uploaded in here. Um, and all of the information pertaining to that transaction is in here as well. So it's kind of a one-stop shop for all of the details pertaining to that transaction. Um, but you'll see in here, you can add in, you know, any other information, um, but nothing else is really required. Um, again, it's just really for your benefit to kind of add everything else in there. So I'm gonna hit save. Um, and then I'm gonna jump into documents. So when you click into the documents tab, it's first going to say, to start work with an opportunity, please select a checklist type first. So over on the left-hand side, you'll see pick checklist type. So you're gonna click on that and you're gonna choose whether it's a residential buyer, condo, or vacant land. So I'm gonna choose residential buyer for this example. And you'll notice that that populates all of the file placeholders. And you, it also um, breaks it out by three different folders here. So I've got the consultation folder under contract and closed. So in that consultation folder for a residential buyer, I'm going to upload the buyer agency and then the two KW disclosures. So you'll notice that these three are required. And then let's say maybe it is a referral. Um, that's where you can add the referral form in W9. But again, that's optional um, if that's the case. Um, so that's what's in the consultation folder for a buyer. Um, if I click on under contract, this is where I'll upload, you know, the offer to purchase, um, the addendum A, the MLS listing sheet for the listing that we got in accepted offer on. Um, but you'll see all of the, um, the different requirements for those documents, the status, whether it's been uploaded or not, and the document name. So it's a nice way of kind of walking you through what is required, what documents do I need for this particular transaction. Um, but essentially where you upload those is you can either click browse so you can browse the files from your computer or you can drag and drop them in. So we're going to walk you through that really quickly here too in zip form. Um, but one other thing as I'm going through these folders um, the closed folder here, you really don't have to worry about uploading anything here. We actually take care of that for you. Um, so once a um, transaction closes and we receive the closing paperwork, we scan that in and we upload it here for you. Um, so that DA um, is disbursement authorization. Um, so all of that will get uploaded um, post closing and once we process everything. So um, you're really just focusing on these two folders here, consultation and under contract. All right. So now I'm going to have Steph take over um, and go into zip form a little bit and walk through how to draft a contract and send it for signature. I unmute myself here. That would help. All right, you guys. Um... Okay, so um, as Lindsay was describing, so command, you know, you're using this as your general electronic file. Um, and then ZipForms is the platform that we use um, solely to draft our documents and to get signatures. Um, so let me share my screen here. this all up. All right, can everybody see my screen okay? Yep. Awesome. Okay, so this is the um, login screen for ZipForms. I'm going to sign in. And it will bring you right into all of the different transactions um, that you have created. Um, along the top here, you can see we've got a dashboard, forms, transactions, templates, um, doc inbox, tasks, contacts, offers, partners, admin tools. Um, you are primarily going to be in just this transactions folder. And this is where ZipForms 
Um, it brings you directly to your transactions um, right when you log in. So, um, so from here along the top, in order to create a new transaction folder, which are these little cards, we're gonna hit new. And depending on the transaction type, we're going to choose either new listing or new offer to purchase. In this example, we are going to choose new offer to purchase. And then here you will name your transaction folder. So um, as a buyer, um, if I'm working with a buyer, I will just name it by their last name and the client type. Actually, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> um, had to pause for a second and re recall, and I do it every day. Um, then the category will be residential. The agent here will default to yourself. And then this is very important. So we want to apply a template to our transaction folder, um, which will populate the transaction folder with the most commonly used forms in a transaction. So from here, we're going to hit the drop down box and we're going to use our global template. So we've got condo list packet, condo offer packet, residential listing packet, offer packet, vacant land, et cetera. And they're all begin. Um, and differentiated by the word global. So we're gonna choose these global packets. So again, for this example, I'm gonna choose resident, residential offer packet and I'm gonna hit save. And once I hit save, it's actually gonna bring me right into the transaction folder. Um, and along the top here, a gray bar has shown up now and we've got a summary of our transaction, the parties, the documents, which here are all of the commonly used forms, checklist, notes, e-sign, and history. You guys will primarily be working in the parties, the documents, and the e-sign tabs. So first things first, I go to the parties and I add my parties right away. And I'll make a note here, um, in zip forms, we generally are just putting in bare bones information in here. Again, we want you to be in the practice of using command and really using that um, to its full capabilities as much as possible. Here, we're just, again, putting in information that we need in order to get our document signed, which is our buyer name and their email address. Save the address, the home phone number, et cetera, for inputting that into command. That's where we really want that information um, to be stored. So I'm gonna hit save here. There's a second person. Don't know his real address, so I'm gonna put in my personal address and hit save. And then I'm gonna add myself as the selling agent. I'm working as Lindsay and Billy's buyer's agent. Okay, so I've got the parties in there. Now I'm going to go to my documents. And from here, again, you, you know, generally in our examples, we're just going to be drafting a buyer agency and the two KW disclosures. Um, and I just kind of like to speak to how when you, especially with your, when you're working with a buyer, um, like in practice, you know, as Lindsay was describing how when you meet a new potential client, a lead, you want to input them into command right away. Um, and then when they become a full-fledged client, you know, that's when you'll be coming to zip forms to draft that buyer agency agreement for them. 
And then you might not touch zip forms for another couple of weeks until they find a home that you want to write an offer on. So um, kind of just know that just like when you're working with a buyer, that's really kind of how it's going to go, that you'll, you'll draft these documents first, then you won't touch this platform for a minute until you want to come back into their transaction folder and grab the offer to purchase and the rest of the docs. Um, so buyer agency agreement. We're going to fill this out. This is not a training on the buyer agency form itself, so I'm going to go quickly through this. But I will share that these highlighted blue boxes are all boxes that you can manipulate. Um, anytime there is a box that you need to check, you can just use a capital X. This is how I would be filling this out. And because I had already populated Lindsay, um, her email address is auto billing, which is nice. Whenever there is a date that you need to input, when you hit the space bar, it's actually just gonna pull up a calendar for you and then auto populate the lines from there, the fields from there. Because I already inputted Lindsay and Billy into and myself into the parties tab, they're auto filling here, which is nice. So I'm completed filling out this document. I am now going to save this. And I want to point out here whenever you're saving a doc, I, I tend to save it along the way um, when I'm filling out more lengthy contracts. Um, but to exit out of the contract now to get to another form that I want to fill out, we're going to hit this back button. Do not hit the browser back button. Um, that will just exit you out of zip forms altogether. Um, you do need to use the back button that they provide. So just an FYI. You'll figure that out soon enough, though, if you accidentally do it and hit the browser button. Okay, so I've got my buyer agency agreement filled out. Um, and again, I tend to couple the affiliated business disclosure and our KW disclosure together along with the buyer agency agreement and get the three of those signed right away because that's how our command folders are set up. So in that consultation folder, these three are, are linked together so I'm generally just getting the three of these signed right away so I can populate the consultation folder in command and submit that for Kimmy's review. The reason why I'm kind of differentiating that is it's not required to have, as long as you get the, the ABA disclosure and the KW disclosure filled out at some point, generally by the time the offer to purchase is happening, that is completely sufficient. I just, again, have uh, just, you know, coupled the three together. So um, when you open a new document in zip forms, um, it's going to ask you to, if you have, you have the option of opening up the previous workspace or starting a new workspace. Generally, I've been teaching it or just hitting starting a new workspace. Um, when we've gone through the zip forms training, I'll show you what it looks like to open a previous workspace. And now you see it actually pulled in the buyer agency agreement that I already filled out. But if I scroll down, 
my ABA disclosure is here as well. So it's kind of nice if you want to have both so that you have the ability to edit both at the same time if you feel you need to. Um, otherwise, starting a new workspace is also just, just fine. It's just going to be your become your personal preference as you guys work. Um, so property, I actually don't know the property yet that Lindsay and Billy are going to be writing on. So I'm going to put an NA there, which is fine. That's all I need to do to fill out the affiliated business disclosure. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to hit back. Now I'm going to go to the KW disclosure. Open new editor form. If you're a brand new agent, you're actually not even going to have that option. It just will bring you right to the latest editor version, just FYI. So I'm going to do open my previous workspace again. And now all three are going to be stacked up. So again, I've got my buyer agency. I've got my affiliated business disclosure. And now the general Keller Williams disclosure is here as well. There's actually nothing. Oh, no, that's not true. The only thing I have to fill out here are my clients' names. They do not autofill based off the parties. I'm not sure why. Um, just a glitch with uh, zip forms. Okay, I'm going to hit save. Um, I'm going to exit out of here. I actually don't know if this prepare signing. It does bring me right to it. Okay. Um, so I could have gotten to this screen from one of two ways. Because I stacked all of my contracts, um, I just was able to go right from my completed package and hit the prepare documents for signing and bringing me to my e-sign screen. So that's great. Um, I'll show you in a minute when I get out of here, the other way that you can do it. So um, the e-sign packet name now, um, I, I'm always making a point to say this, I cannot stress enough, um, make sure that you are renaming your e-sign packets depending on what you're getting signed. So I'm going to rename this buyer agency plus disclosures. And the reason why is because as you are working through the transactions with your buyers, you're going to have multiple e-sign packets created. If you left them at the default names of e-sign packet one, e-sign packet two, e-sign packet three, et cetera, it's just going to for, like make extra work for you if you have to go hunting for a document. So just rename it so that you can your eyes can quickly go to that folder and you can grab what you need later on, whether that's for sending it off for delivery to the other agent or um, finding it for uploading it to command. So I cannot stress that enough. Okay, um, now my documents are actually in the order that I want them to show up for my clients. But if you do have the need, you are able to drag and drop the contracts and um, docs in any order that you want. So just know that that is an option here. Signing service, it does default to DocuSign. Um, if you use this for the first time, it might just be defaulted to, to the digital ink, um, which is the signing service um, that ZipForms provides. We have linked DocuSign in with uh, ZipForms to use their signing service. Um, just a quick note, we just found along the way that we like the functionality of DocuSign versus digital ink. Either works though. We just, um, as trainers, like this software better, this platform better. So um, we encourage you to use DocuSign. 
Okay, so I've got all of this filled out, renamed DocuSign is the signing service. I've got my docs in the order that I want my client to receive them. So I'm gonna hit next. Now I'm gonna choose the parties um, that need to sign. So that's Billy, Lindsay, and myself. I'm actually gonna uncheck Billy right now only because I don't wanna have to log into my personal account in order to get it signed. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put Lindsay and I for now. Another point um, that I want to call out here, when you, again, are using zip forms and for the first time, the signing order might be checked here. Uncheck this because we want um, all of the documents to um, get sent to our clients at the same time. If you left the signing order um, as it is, the way that it's going to work is it's going to go to Lindsay first, Lindsay will sign it, and then I will get prompted to sign it. Um, it's just for ease and efficiency. Uncheck this so that it can get to all parties at the same time. All right, I'm going to hit next. And now it's bringing me into DocuSign. And along the left-hand side, you'll see Lindsay's name appears first. And then there's a little drop-down arrow. So Lindsay, it's defaulted to Lindsay. These are all of the fields that I can use under Lindsay's name. If I have to switch anything for another client, I'll hit the drop-down box and highlight the other person's name. So we're gonna leave it at Lindsay. As we move through this, you'll see that her name and my name are gonna auto fill. And again, that's because we assigned those parties at the way beginning. Um, I'm always moving the date fields so that it's actually sitting above the date line. Again, it defaulted so that Lindsay's signature field will automatically appear. The KW disclosure though, is one where I'm gonna to have to manually add the fields. So I need her initial there. So I went to the left-hand side menu, grabbed this initial space and just literally picked it up and dropped it over there. I don't need the second one. So along the right-hand side, you'll see that another set of options comes up as you click on the spaces, the fields, I can delete that one. I also have to add her signature field on this one. There is no date required. I just am generally adding it. We wouldn't flag that though, if you didn't have the date. Okay, so um, in my practice, I'm always just going back through the docs one more time to make sure everything looks on the up and up. That signature fields are where I want them. I have not missed anything. And we are good to go to send this off. So now down here, we've got my our yellow send button. And voila, this will get to myself and now to Lindsay. I'm gonna hit the green close button and it will bring me back into the transaction folder. And so there was a question, um, Steph, why did the signature prompts not automatically populate? I think that's just the way that zip form has our, our forms fillable. For whatever reason, some of those, like, they didn't make fillable for whatever reason. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if, you know, honestly, Kimmy may not have made that one a fillable form just because there were so few. Yeah, I don't know. She made that there's so few fields to do. So um, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. Um. But I will say, 
Um, and thank you for that question because any of these that have this ZFX kind of logo over the front, these are all fillable forms. Anytime you bring in a PDF, which you will often have to do in order to get signed, anything that you bring in on your own, you're always going to have to manually fill in fields when it's a PDF form, okay? Um, so it is something that you will have to just know to, it's like half and half, whether you're inputting signature fields yourself or if they are getting auto-filled, so, okay? Um, all right, so now, as an agent, I signed in my docs stuff. So I, as the client, received the email um, okay. prompting me to sign. Um, so I got that. I went on my phone. Super easy as a client to click and sign everything where I'm needed to. Awesome. And as me, as the agent, I get to see, if you guys can see my email, I see that Lindsay has viewed it. And I, because I have to sign the buyer agency, I have been prompted to sign this as well. So here's where I'm being prompted to sign it. And this is how it looks to Lindsay too and the clients. So review documents. And I just want to make a little plug. Um, we always say practice on yourself and not on your clients first. Yes. Um, so you can literally do exactly what Steph and I are doing right now, where we're using ourselves as the client um, or the agent, or you can use a family member as a client and say, hey, just FYI, I'm going to send you something. If you can just go through and like sign everything, it's not for anything. It's just for practice for myself. Um, you know, it's a great way to learn the system, really get in there and, um, and practice it. Yes. Thank you. Um, please read the electronic record and signature disclosure. I agree to use electronic records and signatures. I'm going to click that and then I'm going to hit continue. Up here is a yellow start button and it will bring me through the contract to sign wherever it is I need to sign. I only had the one field, so that's all I had to do. And now I'm gonna hit finish. Um, I also want to make a point to say that if you ever need to troubleshoot with a client over the phone on um, issues with receiving signed documents, Nine times out of 10, people will forget to hit this finish button. So that's that should just automatically be your first question back to the client if they are um, saying that they signed it and then you didn't receive it. Um, it's oftentimes they haven't hit that finish button. Another pop-up is gonna um, pull up, save a copy of your document. I always say, no, thanks. Now we're going to go back to email and it's going to give you another indication here, another email that all parties have signed and the completed documents are available. Um, you will not get this email until all parties have signed what you want them to sign. Um, so just know that's kind of your clue when someone says to you, oh, I signed it and then you don't receive this back, that means something happened along the, the way that either they didn't hit the finish button um, or you know one or both of them didn't. So you're always gonna receive this once every, all parties have executed. Um, so I could open this up and my documents are here. My executed documents are here as attachments. Or I'm gonna go back to zip forms. I'm gonna refresh here. I'm gonna go back into my transaction folder. I'm gonna go to documents, get back into my folder. Down here, a gray folder has been created. And you can see this is how I renamed it, Buyer Agency Plus Disclosures. So you can see now if I left that at the general default name, how confusing that would get very fast. Um, 
I'm going to open this up and all of my signed docs are there as well. And the last thing I'm going to show you guys is how to make a single PDF of these documents. Um, you can see on the left-hand side, upper left-hand corner, you can check mark any doc that you want to um, put together to make as a single PDF. So I'm going to save this PDF, save in transaction, save as a single PDF file. Likewise, before um, where I can change the order of documents when I'm getting them signed, I can also change them here. I'm going to hit save. And now over along the left hand folder or along the left hand side is the general folders icon to bring me back to the general transaction room versus one of the specific folders. This is where I'm at right now. And it's going to create the single PDF. So now from here, if I want to, I can download this entire PDF. Lindsay received a copy of all of these docs, but sometimes I think it's nice just to send off one copy for everybody. Where this is actually really nice and um, when you're filling out offers, anything that is in your offer folder, excuse me, any executed documents that you need to send off to a listing agent, sometimes you're gonna see the request that they wanna have it in a single PDF form. So that's why I wanted to really show you that's how you make and combine documents. And then it's gonna always rename it um, to the folder name combined and then the today's date. There's no rhyme or reason where this PDF will fall. Sometimes I've seen them fall at the top of the zip forms transaction folder or like at the bottom down here. So just if you're looking for it, sometimes you gotta kind of hunt for it, okay? Um, now I'm going to send it back to Lindsay, I think. Yeah. So, um, there's where stuff was showing you where you can download, um, and kind of combine it to the, um, zip form transaction. It also would have given you the option to download that right away to your computer if you wanted to. Um, so zip form allows you to combine documents or split them and save them as individual files too. So, um, a lot of different options there. So, Basically, once you have those signed completed documents, the next step is to upload them back into your opportunity. So I'm gonna dive back into command and I'm back into my, um, my opportunity. And so I'm in that consultation folder, that documents tab, consultation folder here. And here is where I'm gonna upload that buyer agency agreement, the disclosure, um, the ABA disclosure and KW disclosure. Um, and so I can either, you know, from my downloads, drag and drop them in, or I can browse my files. Um, one thing that I did want to show everybody is there is an option in the opportunity and command to split and attach documents. And so it might not, not, not be necessary for like the buyer agency, like in some of these documents. Um, but maybe it's more so if the co-broke sends you, um, you know, a list of um, documents and they're all just in one PDF, but they're the documents that you need to submit for compliance review. Um, so if that's ever the case, um, there's an option. Over on the right-hand side, there's three dots. So if you click on that, you'll see that there is an option to split and attach a PDF. And so when you select that, you can drag and drop your files or you can browse, um, but let's just say I've got it saved on my desktop. I can drag and drop that in and there's that document. So when I click next, it's gonna pull up that entire PDF 
And I can see, okay, I've got the buyer agency in here, but then I have the other KW disclosures. I have them all combined as one PDF. I just need to split those and attach them to the appropriate file placeholders. So over on the right-hand side, it's going to say attach pages to, and I can say buyer agency agreement. So I'm going to do that one first, and I'm going to select my page range. So I can see, okay, the buyer agency, oops, let me see here. And Steph knows these way better than I do. <laughs> to be just five doc or five pages. Five pages. Okay. Um, or not because you have the old form. So it's seven. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, wait a minute. Okay. So I'm going to do page <laughs> one through seven and new document name. This is just going to be the file name. And I'm just going to name that buyer agency. Um, okay. So I've got three documents in here. So I need to split and attach two more. So I'm going to hit this attach more pages and I'm going to do the same thing but I'm gonna do it with the other two documents. So the next one is gonna be the, um, is this the KW disclosure stuff? That is, yes, that's the KW okay. disclosure, Thank yep. You. you guys, Steph is the um, documents uh, expert. I am just the tech expert. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know these documents as well. Um, okay, so KW disclosure, so this will be page eight through, is it just three pages? Yeah, yep. eight through 10. So same thing. And this is just gonna be KW disclosure. And then one more, the ABA, and that's gonna be 11 through 12. Okay. Oh, um, it does not like my, uh, the name there. So it doesn't like that slash that I put in there. Okay. So now I've got everything, um, you know, I'm attaching it to the right file placeholders. I've named, named it. I've got my page range, ranges correct. So then all I'm going to do is click on split and attach selected. So typically I think I have to refresh my screen here, or if I click back here, yep. There they are. So there are my um, signed completed documents. Um, they've been uploaded, they're in there ready to be reviewed. So you'll notice that the moment that you upload a document into an opportunity in this document section, this button right here, submit to MC or submit to market center, that becomes blue and it's clickable. That is how you are going to click to submit those files for compliance review. Um, just a note, don't necessarily worry about the start a transaction button that is going to link it directly to create a DocuSign room. Um, and because we prefer to draft documents in zip form, um, we don't really train on that. Um, so if you click on it on accident, don't worry about it. You might get an email from DocuSign saying you created a DocuSign room, um, doesn't affect anything at all. So just disregard it. Um, so let's say I've uploaded all of my documents, I've submitted for compliance review, I've uploaded um, you know, my offer to purchase and all of these documents as well. The next thing that you're going to do is click over to offers and commissions. So the first thing that it wants you to do is click on add new offer. So this is going to be where you add in that accepted offer. And you're just gonna enter in some of the basic details pertaining to that offer. And you can rename it. So if you don't like initial offer, you can rename that. You can leave it as is. Totally up to you. I'm going to leave it as is and hit create offer. It's going to ask you that um, offer date, closing date. Um, so maybe that offer date was from Tuesday. And close date, I think I had said earlier, December 1st. Um, the property address, so if I type that in, should be able to add that in there. You'll notice that Google Maps kind of is um, populating in there. So as you type in an address, it'll automatically populate the rest of it. Um, from there, you'll click on parties. 
And this just wants the seller name and the seller's um, agent. So you'll notice that um, your buyer's information shows up here um, and your name shows up here under representation as well. Um, and just the name of the seller and the co-broke is required. So don't feel like you need to add their email, phone, fax, address, any of that. Um, so you would just add their name. Those are just the two required fields here. Um, and next thing is terms. And so this section here, you're just going to fill out the terms and the earnest money. Don't worry about the option fee or termination option, seller costs, any of that. Um, you'll just enter in um, the cash and financing amounts. So maybe you were in the other way around. That and financing to equal the sales price. So just keep in mind that's equaling the sales price there. And then the earnest money, how much earnest money are, are you putting down? All right. And then next is agent analysis. Um, this section here for a buyer opportunity um, is really not as necessary. Um, this is really more um, a feature that um, is great if you have a listing and you have multiple offers on that listing. Um, because what you can do is you can add each of the offers into this section in command. And then you as the agent can write, okay, here are the pros of this offer. Here are the cons. And what's, what's my analysis? Um, you know, maybe this has, um, you know, it's over asking, but the cons is they have a home sale contingency. Um, and so what that creates then after you've inputted each of those offers that you received is you can create an offer comparison. And it's something that you can print out um, or download and email over to your, your seller client. And then when you are reviewing offers, it just creates that all automatically for you so that when you sit down with them, you can easily go through, you know, okay, here are the terms for this offer. Here are the terms for that offer. This is comparing them. This is my, this is my summary analysis of each of these. Um, so it's a feature that's really great when you are working with um, sellers and you do get multiple offers. But in this case, for a buyer, don't really even worry about this. Nothing's required um, and no one's going to see it. So don't feel like you need to enter anything there and hit save. So there's that offer. And again, for a listing, you can add multiple offers and you would just add in each of those one after the other. Um, but for this case, I'm just going to go ahead and hit accept. Once you do accept an offer, you'll notice that these buttons change and you now have a manage commission button. This is where you're going to um, get into the commission um, section of the opportunity. And you're going to click on that there. And it's going to pull in, um, you know, some of the general information, sales price, commission rate, um, and that's how it's gonna calculate your commission. Um, for whatever reason, this contract date doesn't get entered in here. So you can click on edit general information and you can add in that contract date and save changes. And there we go. So now that's that field that is required is filled out. If you scroll down here, you'll see more of that breakdown occur. Um, and I believe sometimes this isn't always completely accurate with like the cap and everything. Um, some of this, the details here um, only update post transmittal. So post, um, you know, at the end of the month, once our MCA's office, um, you know, goes through that transmittal period. Um, but if you ever need to add in like referral to another agent, or you need to add in like the launch, um, deduction, you can edit agent payment and then scroll down and you can add extra payment options. So any referrals, bonuses, deductions. Um, so what you would do is click on add item, choose, um, whether it's a bonus deduction, insider, outside referral. Um, just taking the launch example, that would be a deduction. Um, and you would have to, I think, manually calculate that amount. Um, 
But then as far as like the description, pay to like some of these fields that are required, um, description would just be launch. Pay to, you could just put in KW or Keller Williams. Um, the address, you could put in the office address and you could even put your phone number or the office phone number. It really doesn't matter for us. Um, we're just really looking at that amount in the description. And then you would just click add. If anyone has ever has more specific questions in regards to how to fill out the commission, you can always reach out to our MCA's office. Um, they're always happy to help kind of walk you through, you know, different scenarios and um, just ensure that everything's entered correctly. Um, you know, once you hit the submit button, um, you know, it goes to our MCA's office to review it. Um, so it's not just like it's it's done. Like they're always kind of there to make sure everything's entered correctly. Um, and they're there to kind of help and support and make sure that you get paid um, correctly and on time. And so that's why it's so important to, you know, have all of those documents uploaded um, prior to closing um, and submit your commission request prior to closing so that you do get paid on time. So just another plug, make sure that you do hit that submit button there and that will go to um, the MCA's office. Does anyone have any questions? I know we went over a couple minutes here. Um, that was my fault with my Zoom problems, but um, yeah, any questions, you guys? Yeah. Yes, hi. Uh, good morning. My name is Chen. Um, you know, this this uh, training is really, really timely for me because I'm starting to I am uh, learning how to do it yesterday before I have the training today. So I'm like, oh, you have to put, you know, put the comment first before you put the forms, right? Now, question is, you know, um, which documents does does the market center have to like um, review before we send it out as we're starting? You know, because I'm starting, I have like my productivity coach to do it. So do I have to have productivity coach review it and then? market center or is it you know how does it work um just in terms of um just yeah generally speaking because you are a part of the launch program um we do want you to have your productivity coaches review mm -hmm. um that is a separate reason you know insofar as like loading them into command so we just want to make sure it's good for the client and you know up and up um, and then once it's executed, because whatever you have reviewed with your productivity coach might not actually end up being an executed offer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, then once it's executed, then that's when you'll be loading that into command for compliance review. Okay. Yeah, so we wait really until it's executed before we upload it while yeah. we're training. But, yes. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Understand. Um, Second question, um, we got three productivity coach in our office, right? Do we tap anyone that is available at that time or once you start with one, you have to continue with one? How does it work? Uh, no, you can tap into all of them. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, that's my question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really good training, thank you. Good. Thanks for hopping on. Anyone else have questions? I do. Um... The documents that are needed, uh, say for uh, buyers, like I, we went over the buyer's agency, but actually executing the contract, the residential offer to purchase, what other requirements do you guys have? Is there a checklist that we need to pull from zip forms to make sure we have everything the client signed? Um, a good... Um... Well, using the under contract checklist in command, and it's not a checklist per se, but just like you can see all of the required documents that we need because they're labeled as required. Um, but we do have a separate training on just doing the offer to purchase, um, which I think I can pull up in YouTube. I I do understand, you know, the legal documents, but every broker coming from another broker, every broker has their own kind of things they want in there, in there with uh, disclosures at the end. Well, that's exactly I make sure it, yeah. 
I'm grabbing KW's stuff and not just, you know, winging it. Like right. not just seeing, like say the email signature, there's a special document for that sometimes for each broker. Um, consent for, you know, your signatures to be okay. And then there's other disclosures that each broker will throw in with an offer to purchase. I just want to make sure I'm grabbing those, not just doing an offer to purchase or an addendum lead base paint. Um, the yeah, you've got like our core documents that all brokerages have to use, right? Yep. And then right. the ancillary docs, like the ABA disclosure and the KW disclosure, those are the ones that are specific to us. Okay. Are those um, it? And then, um, is there an email electronic? There's not. So it actually was a that comment in the training. So just by hitting that check mark where it says I have read the electronic signing disclosures, okay. that is sufficient for us. So that is okay. our that is our step in order to get that um that authorization from our clients. So they're doing that step right there. Um then the only other one really is just that home warranty. Um either um, invoice or waiver. And again, um, that is a, shows up as a required placeholder in uh, command. So we won't let you miss anything mm -hmm. for sure. So and the condition report, you just, do we download that off of the MLS? Have yep. the, then have the um, clients sign it and then do it all in DocuSign and then add that in. Yep. And as I was saying before, as far as like how sometimes we'll have to pull in PDFs, that's a perfect example of that, where if I'm going to write an offer on a home, I'm not going to have that um, real estate condition report like automatically in my transaction folder, right? So I have to download that, pull it into zip forms, um, and then I'll set that up for e-signing just the okay. way the rest of the... the just like the rest of the docs. Yep. Okay. I also uploaded a listing and buyer checklist document to the chat. Um, that's linked on our website, um, but that's also a good resource. Um, just if you like having like that checklist, um, that's also um, something that you can take a look at. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good questions. Yeah. Okay. I know we went a little over, so thank you guys for sticking with us. Um, but yeah, so like I mentioned, we do this bi-weekly every two weeks. Um, we kind of go through some similar things, throw in a couple different things here and there, um, but feel free to check out um, the link that I included earlier. That's the link directly to this um, compliance and command playlist um, where you can see some past trainings that Steph and I have done. Um, sorry, I missed it. Um, every two weeks you have similar training, similar topics. It's the same. Yeah, we're generally doing the same shell. Um, if we do it several times, then if we can repeat you, then that means, okay, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, but then I'll put in a plug in for, you know, we've got, this is like very specific to command and zip forms, but like every Thursday, Lindsay is doing a training on a marketing piece or a tech piece, mm -hmm. um, you know, that like a different command functionalities. Um, and then every Monday, Joan, um, Reed and I are doing contract training. Um, so that's, you know, that's over Zoom at noon. Um, so that's where you'll kind of plug into those other opportunities. But yeah, but this one is just specific to command and zip forms. So, yeah. Oh, one more question. Sorry. Um, you These are all accepted offers you want submitted, not offers just sent and rejected because right. some brokers require you to download those too. I'm just making sure you guys don't. We don't want that. We just want the executed documents. Yep. So, cause th that might be the case where with a buyer, especially you might be writing three or four offers before one gets executed. We only want the executed docs. Okay. Thank you. The ones that you're going to get paid on. <laughs> oh, and would you be sending those rejected offers? <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, to your clients as what well, like a copy? Um, yes, we can. I mean, I mean, sometimes agents. It depends on if the listing agent has provided you with a rejected 
version of it. You know, sometimes it's just submitted and, you know, you get an email back saying that you that it didn't get accepted, but you might not actually receive a rejected version of it, which is it's technically not required. It's a courtesy for sure. Oh. Um, but yeah, you don't have to send an official rejection, rejected copy to a, a buyer. Okay. If you have it available, absolutely. That's great. Okay. But otherwise we're just communicating. Okay. Thank you, Lindsay.